Is this frequency open? Is this frequency open? CQ, 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 WX0, MIK, Whiskey X-Ray 0, Mike India Kilo. CQ, 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 WX0, MIK. Hello and welcome to the next edition of the Mike Wills Podcast. This is the Dog Days of Podcasting edition for August 7th, 2018. I am WX0MIK and my name is Mike Wills. This season we are covering amateur, or if you want, ham radio. Um, So I am uh, still in the ARRL ham radio license manual for the technician. So in chapter four, we have ta- uh, started to break things down a little bit. Uh, we first started talking about propagation and um, how radio signals are transmitted and how they can carry across long distances. We talked about the ionosphere. We started going to the basics of an antenna and what makes an antenna kind of tick. Now we're t- talking about uh, one of the other major components in transmitting radio, and that is feed lines. And with feed lines, we talk about a term that they call SWR, and we'll cover that in just one minute. So let's start out. I know we kind of covered this before, but what is a feed line? A feed line connects the radio to the antenna. Pretty simple. You can also use... Feed lines are also used when you need to con- uh, to connect different components from the between the radio and the antenna. So, for instance, if you want to amplify if you want to amplify your signal, you can uh, connect the antenna line up to your amplifier. Your amplifier will then increase that power and then transmit over the the line. Um, for instance, I can get I, I'm not exactly sure in the math, but let's just say I have a 100 watt uh, radio and I want to transmit on the full legal limit of amateur radio. So I want to multiply that signal by five by 15 times, put up to 1500 watts. It uh, You would use an amplifier for that to do that. Uh, for most radios I've seen, they put out 100 watts for your bigger base and antenna uh, radios. I may have seen one or two that do up to 200 watts, but those are few and far between. So you, if you want to go the full legal limit, which is 1,500 watts, um, you can. You just need an amplifier to do that. Uh, there's other things like antenna tuners and things. So there's several different things between your radio and the antenna that you may hook up along the way. Uh, just a little peek into the future, I guess. So the big thing that they're trying to teach you within a short period is that there's a such thing called uh, uh, feed line loss. And so just by nature of running through the wire, it will, you'll lose some power. And then some, uh, some cables are rated to where um, they say, X number of dBi loss per 100 feet or dB loss. Those are numbers that you can then take, punch into your math to figure out just how high you got to crank up that uh, amplifier if you want to keep it at that 1500 watts, which is a ton of power. Um, Then they start talking about uh, coax cables and kind of describing that. Uh, I think they take this opportunity to cover a little bit more on the coax because it's one of the most popular coax um, or one of the most popular feed lines being used because in most cases they're pretty cheap. Um, So that's pretty easy to use. Uh, They did mention a special type of coax called a hard line. Um, They call it that because the shield is actually made from a semi-flexible solid tomb of aluminum or copper. 
Uh, this makes it so it's much harder to bend, but also has the lowest loss of any of the coax feed lines. Um, I think I've seen this. I don't know. But uh, I did see some pretty stiff coax uh, one day with, when I was hanging out with, uh, with the local ham radio club. They also then they dive into something called characteristic impedance. Um, I'll let you read the section yourself, but the uh, big takeaway is that um, in ha- an amateur radio, typically we try and hit the characteristic impedance of fifty ohms. Um, just makes things simpler, and um, that's how most things are ultimately designed against. Uh, your typical TV or uh, video cable is usually 75 ohms. Um, they also talk about another feed line type that um, there's multiple names for it. Uh, some of it's called uh, ladder line, window line, um, twin lead is another Basically, what they're describing is two wires that are parallel to each other, usually held apart by plastic or some sort of insulator. Um, And then that's another form of feed line that is used pretty commonly. Um, They call it ladder line or window line because there's little windows or it kind of looks like a ladder. Depends upon your perspective. They're both kind of the same thing. So then they start talking about SWR. What is SWR? SWR is also standing wave ratio. It is, um, which, uh, to kind of break it down, is where the power carried by the feed line is correctly tra- or completely transferred to a load, like an antenna. So every single uh, watt of power you put through is transmitted through that antenna. Um, anything that is not so, but in a, that's in a perfect world, we're talking about real world where not everything is perfect. So you, they, they designed this ratio so that you can see how much power is being transmitted back to the power source or your radio. And then you need a way to handle that. There are some, uh, radios that have, um, internal tune, antenna tuners so it can handle uh, certain differences and then can help provide you the perfect um, push. Um, Otherwise, sometimes there's these boxes that you can get that can handle much higher differences. But the the ideal is one, a one, what they call one-to-one. The book is saying an SWR of 2.2 to one or higher um, can cause problems for your radio. It kind of depends upon your radio. I think I've heard m- most radios handle three to one, usually pretty good, especially those with a built-in tuner. If you get anything higher than that, you're going to need an actual antenna antenna tuner. However, you need to get your SWR as low as possible, and that's typically done by either fixing a bad coax line Maybe it's trimming or expanding your antenna that you had made. There's various different ways, but ultimately it's not perfectly delivering your power to your antenna. So you're, and you're reflecting power back and reflecting power back to something that's transmitting isn't always a good thing. So I am going to call her there for tonight. There's A lot more covering, talking about SWR within here. And then, of course, as we dive into the general, there is a lot more because as you start talking with HF radios, it gets a little more complex or it becomes a little more important. Tomorrow, we are going to talk about practical antenna systems. So we're actually going to talk about actual antennas and their shapes. Um, And then what's after Four. Just as a sneak preview, then we start talking about amateur radio equipment and how they actually work. Yay! So I'm going to call her here for tonight. Um, you can always find my website and these show notes at mike at mikewills.me. You can find me on Twitter and Facebook. Just look up Mike Wills. Uh, 
Username is Mike Wills in both cases. Or you can email me, mike at mikewills.me. And I really appreciate you listening. I this is this is a blast kind of see how much I know and how much I gotta like re read from those sections. And I'm having fun. Now it's always a good refresher on top of it. So um I will call her tonight and I again thank you for listening. Uh this is 73 from WX0 MIK. The frequency is now clear. The frequency is clear. WX0 MIK 73.